Hello and how's everybody doing out there? I'm Jay Harvey Lewis and today we're going to talk about a very important issue that is affecting most people in a negative way. Some people much more than others. I was a victim of it and about two years after having discontinued use of this product, which most people unfortunately are consuming, I am doing very well. I was having problems with my knees. I was having very, very bad joint issues. I thought it was permanent damage from running t for too many years. Um, I was having like tightness in my chest. I was having, um, I don't know, I was having joint issues of all kinds. And I had many symptoms. I'm not going to go over all of them. But I was convinced that I had an autoimmune disorder. And I went and I had my blood tested. I had like rounds and rounds of tests. And they all came back perfect. I was a completely healthy person. And so I started thinking, okay, well, I've got to do something <laughs> because I can't have this tightness in my chest. Um, I eventually tracked it down to a product that is in many, many foods after doing an elimination diet. It was very clear that there was a specific product causing this. And the symptoms for me didn't really hit until about 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours after I had consumed it. And what was that product? It's glyphosate. And um, you might think that's something that is, is just being sprayed on crops and then it just kind of goes away. But the problem is, a lot of it is absorbing into the, the products themselves. So what's the deal with glyphosate? So what's the deal with all this news about glyphosate? I mean, it's just a weed killer, right? How bad can it be? Here's EWG's quick rundown of what glyphosate is, why people are so concerned about it, and what the future holds. Glyphosate is the key ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup, the most widely used pesticide in the U.S. Each year, more than 250 million pounds of glyphosate are sprayed on American crops, primarily on Roundup-ready corn and soybeans genetically engineered to withstand the toxic herbicide. But it's also sprayed in our communities, in parks, golf courses, and even playgrounds. Fun fact, you can also find glyphosate in your cereal bowl. EWG tested Cheerios and other oat-based cereals found shockingly high levels of glyphosate in almost every sample tested. Nearly every time a government agency or public interest group tests food for glyphosate, they find it. So why are people so concerned? In one word, cancer. In 2015, the World Health Organization designated glyphosate a probable carcinogen. The state of California followed, adding it to its Proposition 65 list of chemicals known to cause cancer, and scientific studies continue to confirm this link. We should flag here that the United States Environmental Protection Agency does not agree, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Monsanto dismisses these health concerns. They repeatedly claim that glyphosate is safe and tried to cover up any evidence to the contrary, and the EPA has let them get away with it. Monsanto is now battling tens of thousands of lawsuits because of glyphosate's link to cancer. Internal documents exposed in these lawsuits show a troubling history. Monsanto first learned of the link to cancer in 1983 and have been manipulating the EPA to hide the truth. They also include emails that show the company was in close communication with the EPA official overseeing the safety review of glyphosate, as well as efforts to sell a federal review of the herbicide's toxicity to people. In addition, the EPA ignored independent scientific research linking glyphosate to cancer. Instead, they used research provided by and paid for by Monsanto. So where is this all going? We're not entirely sure. Juries have held glyphosate responsible for plaintiff's cancer in three lawsuits already, awarding the plaintiff over $2 billion in damages for the company to pay. We expect more of these verdicts as the lawsuits continue to go to trial. And the EPA? Well, the EPA has doubled down on the support for glyphosate. In April 2019, the EPA announced that it believed glyphosate to be safe. Needless to say, at EWG, we don't agree. We stand by the scientific evidence linking glyphosate to cancer, and we're going to continue to raise awareness. But we need your help. Go to ewg.org slash glyphosate to take action and spread the word to your friends and family on social media. Very interesting, right? So you might be wondering what are some of the major products that have glyphosate in them, have this Roundup pesticide? Well, the main ones are wheat, corn, soy, um, beets. There's a whole list of products that um, have been genetically modified so that they can withstand more glyphosate Roundup being sprayed on them. But the one that I found was especially causing symptoms to occur with me, like really, really bad symptoms that caused me to get all these blood tests, was wheat and oats. So many people assume that when they eat wheat and oat products, it's extremely healthy and they're marketed as these health products. If you look at you know, your Cheerios for years and years, they said heart healthy, this and that. Well, in fact, 
these things are highly contaminated often. And so we're going to go over a, a list that the Environmental Working Group has put together um, to kind of let people know which cereals and granola products um, and things like that have uh, consistently shown high levels of glyphosate. But wait a second, before we do, I'd like you to see something else. Hold on a second, let me pull it up. So they're teaching kids in universities that this stuff is completely benign, ignoring all the scientific evidence. This is not science, what you're about to see. This is called pseudoscience. This is a professor at Cornell University talking to a group of students. It's very safe to humans and the environment. And in fact, I have some right here. Anyone want to try it? <laughs> not great tasting, but it's not bad. Anyone want to try it? Jonathan. <laughs> Did you know when to try it? Thank you. It's really good. No, you don't know. Okay. Sure. How would you feel if that was your son or daughter um, eating Roundup in class? Yeah, right. it's, it's not great tasting, <laughs> but it won't make you sick. The reason it, it's, it has a protein in it that when, it, when an insect ingests it, that protein lodges with a particular gut receptor and causes the insect to get a big stomach ache and die. The insect essentially starves to death. Well, it turns out it's not good for insects. It's also not good for humans. So it has been shown to cause um, stomach problems, gastrointestinal problems for people as well. It can cause that um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, um, because it, it kills the bacteria in the gut and it can actually permeate through the lining of the intestines, which is a very thin um, membrane. And you know, the gut is where things get absorbed into the bloodstream. So I believe that was what was happening with me. And that's why it took 24 hours for these symptoms to come in place because my body was slowly digesting, slowly uptaking, being circulated through my bloodstream and eventually causing systemic inflammation. So if you have any type of undiagnosable condition that's been going on, please get tested for glyphosate exposure. There is a company that does that and I will put the link in the comments so you can do that. Um, you just send them a sample of your urine and they will tell you if you have a significant quantity of glyphosate in your system. And while you're at it, maybe you could join a class action lawsuit against one of these companies who has been marketing themselves as a healthy company and turns out they're using pesticide infused products because when they apply this pesticide to grains, what they're doing is they actually spray it before the harvest. Syngenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the wheat school. And lots of growers say the, gr the straw is still too green. Is there anything we can do to help? So it really comes down to can we speed that process? And so when you're doing this, you really do need to go to one of the least mature areas of the field. We cannot get into hitting it with pre-harvest glyphosate too early. If we do that, we could end up with glyphosate residue in the grain. So they're trying to dry out. They're, it's called a desiccation. So, so basically, let's say you have hundreds of acres or thousands of acres, giant field of grain, and there's a low-lying spot. You might have moisture building up there, and you might have some of the grain is going to um, be ready for harvest at a different time. You know, maybe some of it stayed green much too long. Well, if you're in an industrial farming operation, efficiency is going to make you more profitable. So they spray the glyphosate on. They're supposed to do it a certain period of time. I think it's a week before they harvest, and then um, then they go back and harvest it later. Well. This stuff is clearly getting in our foods, and I'm going to show you the data supporting that. But first, let's let's hear what one of the representatives for Monsanto says. So, if it's really safe to drink, and they claim it's, it's safe to consume, let's see what what really happens. glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. You want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. Yeah. Not not really, but not really? I know it wouldn't hurt if, me. If, if you think so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, so, it's not. So are you ready to drink one glass of glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Okay, then it's except, finished. Except then the interview is finished. So you just agree with yourself, then? Yeah. Here, complete jerk. Well, who's the real jerk? 
the company that is deceiving people into eating pesticides or the guy who's trying to expose it. But when you have more lobbyists working for biotech currently in DC than you have actual congressmen and senators combined, you can see where things get a little bit jaded in our lawmaking process. So let's look at the EWG's very important research and see what they found and see if you're eating a cereal brand that has a lot of glyphosate in it. So in a new round of tests, Monsanto's weed killer still contaminates food marketed to, wait for it, children. Latest findings come as courts levy more than $2 billion in judgments against Bayer Monsanto over cancer-causing glyphosate. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to let you do that, but um, let's summarize it. So this study was done a year ago, and they're following it up with a confirmation study, like good scientists would do, right? So um, the products that you're going to see here have already been tested um, two and sometimes three times in addition to the test below. So the new tests in their labs confirms and amplify their previous findings from last year, which um, show glyphosate consistently above the um, EWG Children's Health Benchmark. The two highest levels of glyphosate were found in Honey Nut Cheerios of O's Medley Crunch with 833 parts per billion and Cheerios. Just the regular old, regular old Cheerios, 729 parts per billion. So they set their um, children's benchmark at 160 parts per billion. And so let's take a look at these cereals. Um, so the ones that are above that level, that threshold level, we got, ooh, wow, big time. Yeah, that Cheerios toasted whole grain oats. Hope you're not eating that. Chocolate peanut butter Cheerios, Cheerios, um, oat crunch cinnamon. Uh, let's just talk about the bigger ones. Honey Nut Cheerios Medley Crunch, that was the first one we mentioned. Um, but as you can see, Nature Valley Baked Oat Bites. And you will um, find, if you go to the stores now, Nature Valley had to take the 100% natural off of its labels. And the reason why is because of the glyphosate contamination. Uh, okay, so we got Quaker Breakfast um, Cereal, Quaker Chewies, um, Apple Cinnamon Cheerios, Quaker um, Oats. Most of the Quaker Oats here, I'm seeing the instant ones, the regular ones. The, the ones with chia seeds. I mean, they sound so healthy, don't they? Um, so they've been just doing study after study, and um, it's really good that we have these folks on our side. Just take a moment to scan this list and see if you're eating any of these. I mean, cashy, heart-to-heart, -heart, organic toasted cereal. I mean, come on, folks. I mean, you know, Lucky Charms, everybody knows that's not healthy, but come on, look at this. Quaker Simply Granola, oats, honey, and raisins, almond. How can you think this is, is gonna be causing harm to you? Look at that, 400, 430. They did two tests on this, consistently way above what's considered safe. Let me give you a chance to look at the rest of these. What in the world are we thinking? Why is our government allowing this to happen year after year? Well, it's because there's a lot of money to be made from these products. And here's a nice little graphic that the EWG put together. Um, a lot of people complain about the, oh, well, that person doesn't really have celiac. They're not really glyphosate intolerant. They're not really gluten intolerant. Well, maybe they're glyphosate intolerant. This is a huge number. There's more glyphosate. There's 10 times more glyphosate than there is vitamin D, folks. So, yeah, th these are vitamin fortified. They're also pesticide fortified. And we need to start demanding action. There's actually been a lawsuit filed in Florida. I'll link that also in the comments um, against General Mills for knowingly including this in their products for not sourcing healthier alternatives for um, being part of that uh, massive, massive part of the supply chain. Uh, you know, if they, if General Mills decided to stand up to glyphosate and say, hey farmers, you know, it might cost us a little bit more, we'll take the hit because we don't want to poison children and poison adults who think they're eating a heart healthy product. Well, you know, there is some good news. Recently, we've had Bayer Monsanto losing billions of dollars in lawsuits and uh, their stock value actually plummeted exactly 40% on the uh, one year anniversary after Bayer bought Monsanto last year. So there is good news happening. Um, these companies that have been doing things that are not, not just unsustainable for the planet, because think about all the glyphosate that is contaminating uh, the rivers and the water supplies and killing off frogs and insects, um, pollinators. I mean, it's, it's actually causing harm to humans. And um, in this case, it's not people going around eating fast food. It's people thinking that they are doing something good for their bodies. So um, time for us to stand up and to stop buying things from these mega corporations like General Mills who are um, willfully, willfully supporting uh, glyphosate in our food chain. Um, who knows 
what kinds of impacts this is having on people who don't even know it. How many people have joint problems or these other problems and they just assume it's because they're getting old and they are not living life to the fullest because they have these unknown health problems that the doctors can't figure out. They couldn't solve it with me. They had no idea what was going on with me. So um, go check out the Environmental Working Group. They are an awesome nonprofit out of California doing tremendous work. Go and support them. Um, check out their other work. Share this information with your friends and family so that they can you know, have the opportunity to, to avoid these products like corn and soy and wheat that are um, contaminated with glyphosate. You know, I, I suggest to challenge them just one week without uh, wheat and see what happens. That's what, I, that's what I did. After a week of not eating any wheat, I mean, it was like I, my body became young again. I was, I was like a cripple because of my knees. And as soon as that, uh, that burden, that toxic load on my body subsided, I mean, I, I just went out and ran three miles in celebration. It was great. And so I want to see that for more people. Um, so this is my experience, and um, I hope that you will share your experiences in the comments. Maybe you are one of those people who has eliminated these toxic products from your diet, and you've had success stories also. So let's hear about those things, and let's hold these companies' feet to the fire and make sure that there is change, and so it does not continue to affect future generations and our children. I'm Jay Harvey Lewis. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our app, which is all about finding healthy alternatives, living more sustainably, everything from DIY to um, farmers markets to supporting those local businesses in our communities. And we have a wonderful forum, so you know you can ask questions to your community and um, share some ideas and uh, products, recipes, businesses in your area to help us go green, good, and local once again. I look forward to seeing you there on that app, and we have a major update coming soon, so stay with us for that. If you're not happy with what you see on the app, we are making some huge updates we're about to release very soon. So I really appreciate you all. Much love to you all wherever and whenever you are on the interwebs. As uh, James Evan Pilato at Media Monarchy says, you should check his stuff out too, by the way. Every Wednesday, he does an awesome broadcast there, Food World Order, which covers food, health, and uh, things like this topic. Anyway, I will be seeing you shortly, and I hope you are staying safe wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.